Right. So we've got our dinosaur bust ready. This is at the highest subdivision level. Before I actually go in with any alphas or details, one thing I like to do is just refine the forms. Maybe work into the surface and try and put some deep crevices and wrinkles in. Just using the damn standard brush. It's just trying to almost think ahead to how you think this should look. I know that sounds vague, um, but this is a big old gnarly animal. Big, thick, leathery skin. It's going to have folds. Look at your reference of rhinos, elephants, large mammals, which is a contradiction because these weren't mammals, but you know what I mean. It's trying to pre-guess where we can make a little interesting feature with the scales. And I always use the same combination of brushes. I use things like Inflate, the clay build-up, and the damn standard at this stage. Here I'm just picking up little nostril details. Now I'm speeding up this video because this did take me about an hour in real time. And that's something I'd like to keep emphasising that I think the total work I put on this um, finished T-Rex model was about 12 hours. Again, you see um, an example of just using the dam standard. I just isolated the T-Rex from the eye so I can go in with the flat polish just to refine the eyelids. You see me constantly switching between clay build-up, dam standard and inflate. A little anom anomaly you might have seen there where the cursor seemed to shoot off in a perfect line. It's done that in every iteration of ZBrush I've ever used. It's just some kind of graphical glitch. But here I'm trying to establish where I think some weight might be needed for the this, this softer sagginess of this eye area. Just masking out using Inflate. It's a great trick, technique and trick for just getting some weight and some bulginess to the eyes. And this clay build-up brush really does emulate one of the tools I used to use, a rake brush in traditional sculpture. It's fantastic. There's no real plan at this stage either. It's just basically doing what you think will look cool. I suppose I have the advantage of doing quite a few of these before if you're starting out doing something like this. I'd just say experiment. Do what your instinct tells you looks right. And look at other people's work all the time. It isn't plagiarism to look at people's work. If you feel inspired and you see something you could use on your work. I should take it as a great compliment if people mention that they've looked at my work before doing their own. And paleo art, as it's known, is just so out there that the work done by paleo artists like myself can prompt and cause arguments with paleontologists. I could do something with a nostril that contradicts other people's interpretation of nostrils and it makes people think, well, could he have a point? Does that make sense? Now you see here with the clay build-up brush, we're just sharpening up this edge. We will be going for a nice ridge of scaly lip scales here. This is obviously going to be really fleshy. And with the clay build-up, if you just hit Alt, it actually gives you a negative value to the, the positive. While doing this as well, things like, um, if you look at the alpha value of the clay build-up, one thing I might do later on is just change that to a more circular shape. If you watch other people work as well in ZBrush, you might recognise that people do use the same key brushes. 
here I'm just trying to estimate and guesstimate where I want to produce some finer surface details. I'm not a big fan of doing veins underneath the dinosaur's neck. A vein showing implies that the, the skin's incredibly thin. Going for a point of interest at the back of the lower jaw. And again, this is where you can give the base structure a real lived-in look. I've demonstrated this before and people say, well, how do you know where to do these lines? And it is spontaneous. You almost let your hand organically do what it thinks it should do. That sounds bizarre, but it's true. You've got to experiment. And the more you play, the more you practice. This red wax material is incredible as well, that it does emulate the look of real red wax modeling clay. I see people sculpting in the silver and grey materials and it just drives me crazy because I've never used clay that was that metallic. I'm just working on folds and bulges. Sculpting is all about depth, depth perception and recognizing tone, shadow and light, especially in digital clay. You know, there'll be a nice ridge of scales over the back of the skull there. I suppose if I have an advantage, I know the underlying shape of the T-Rex skull really well. So I kind of know where I should em emphasize. But use reference, as much reference as you can find. Trying a little bit of an overlap there. Again, using mask lasso, a little bit of an inflate. This may all change. This gullet under the jaw would be flexible. This thing would be biting off huge chunks of meat and swallowing them down. This is definitely a stage that you have to go through before you start going in with alphas. You can rush, you can have the, the basic form as it was when we started this and think, yeah, I'll just throw some alphas at it, it'll look great. If you're going to try and succeed as a sculptor and texture artist, you need to put in the effort. Of course, if you're familiar with ZBrush, we could have actually done these on a layer, which is a whole set of tutorials in itself. But what we're going to try and do is just do it on this same one model without layers. Layers can complicate things. Again, this is damn standard and inflate. And the use of limited brushes emulates the way I used to work with real clay you'd have two or three modeling tools. Some of the best real world sculptors I work with, I turn up with a nice set of modeling tools in a big leather bound satchel thinking, oh, look at me and all my tools. And one guy I work with just used, used lolly sticks, wooden lolly sticks that he used to carve. And he could do more with a lolly stick than I could do with all my fancy Italian tools. And I'm actually not at the highest subdivision level here either. You might find that your tool reacts more positively if you step down slightly. Then when you step it back up, you actually get a different effect. Just trying to emphasize this tight skin underneath the belly. 
Again, lots of random shapes carved into the surface. Think about the bottom of the hands that have pads on. Incredibly durable pads. Think about a dog's foot. Right, we're nearly there with this. I suppose I could admit if I was doing this for um, a commercial job, I could spend a day on this area. Okay. Time to look at it. Are we happy? I think we're ready for actually going on the next stage with masking with poly paint. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video.